so much for watching. Those were a slip jig and two of my favourite reels, and I'm going to teach you them now. Um, if you've been watching this series, uh, thank you so much for, for joining me. Uh, this is basically a series of free tutorials uh, to help you learn the tabs in my new book, O'Neill's Tunes for Claw Hammer Banjo. Uh, link is in the description below, and um, you can buy the book uh, on Amazon. Uh, you can also subscribe to me as a patron on my Patreon page and have access to all manner of uh, free tabs videos um, on both particular tunes and on particular areas of banjo technique as well. Uh, I also post regularly here on my YouTube channel. So that's enough of the plugging, let's teach you the tune. So we start off with a slip jig called Will You Come Down to Limerick. Um, now this is the first slip jig in this series. So um, just to explain how they work if you've not come across them before. Um, so by now, if you've, if you've, as I say, been doing the videos up till now, you will have come across normal jigs, if you like, 6-8 jigs, what we think of probably as more standard jigs. 9-8 is basically the same idea, but an extra group of three. So in 6-8, we, in one bar we get one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So two groups of three quavers, basically. Um, here we get three groups of three quavers. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Emphasis generally on that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, like that. Um, and that's, other than that, it's basically right hand wise in terms of relating it to claw hammer it pretty much correlates with what we do in jigs. So in a in normal 4-4 time, which we do a lot of and which we'll do later in this set, um, we follow that rule where we go down on the beat. So on a 1, for example, we'll play with our playing finger and move our arm downwards. On an off beat or an and, we'll use our thumb or a left hand slur like a slide or a pull off or a hammer. Um, when it comes to jigs or slip jigs, because we group them in three quavers, we feel them slightly differently right hand wise. So each group of three is down up down or MTM, M being middle finger, T being thumb. If you use your index finger, that's fine. You can apply the same logic. Uh, so I use my third finger quite a lot, which is really weird. And I don't know why I do, but it just seems to work for me for some reason. So um, each group of three is MTM. And as I say, the T can be substituted out for a left-hand slur, depending on what note we need. So, without further ado, let's go to Will You Come Down to Limerick specifically. It's a three-part tune, um, and as with almost every folk tune I seem to teach, there's an upbeat at the beginning, so that means there's a little sort of mini bar just before the main bar begins. So we count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then, we're, then we start on beat one of the main tune. So that first note there is just your D string, your first string, dead easy. So that's the that's beat nine of the sort of the what's called an anacrusis. So it's like a little mini bar at the beginning. Um, so we count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then we're into the tune. So the tune begins like this. We basically form a D7 chord. We're in G tuning. <laughs> One day I'll remember to say that at the beginning. We're in G tuning. We put on a D7 chord and we're going to play your second string and then your third string. If you haven't seen a D7 chord, it looks like that. So first string, first fret, sorry, of the second string, second fret of the third string. So we're going to play the second string, drop thumb the third string and then play O thumb. So it's C, A, G. That's the first group of three. The next group of three is G, D, G. So we're going to play the third string, drop thumb the fourth string, and play the third string again. Um, if you're familiar with this series, you will already be accustomed to the way that there are many ornaments in Irish music, or grace notes as we call them. A brief recap, because I know I've been over them before. Grace notes are basically extra little notes that don't have any time value of their own. So they're just like extra little embellishments. So these are your three melody notes. <laughs> But to make that first note ever so slightly fancier, we do this. So what that is, is as you hit that third string, you're going to very, very quickly hammer on the second fret and then pull straight off again. So it sounds as much like one note as you can make it sound. So, so far we should have this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that last note there is beat seven. So that's the seventh quaver of the bar, and that's just G again. And then that is a crotchet, which means it lasts for two quavers. So if your last your last group of three is one, two, 
three. So that's double the length of all the other notes we've had, and then you play your first string on the end of that bar. Okay, so, so far that's what we've got. Sorry, I went too far. And that note takes you into the next bar, uh, which starts exactly the same as the first bar. So you're gonna, again, get your D7 chord on, play second string, third string, open third string. Then you're gonna play your G again, then once again, you're going to drop thumb the fourth string, but this time you're going to play an F sharp. So that's the fourth fret of your fourth string. Um, it actually makes most sense to use your little finger because it saves you having to move around, but a lot of people don't feel particularly comfortable with their little finger. Even I, who does feel quite comfortable with my little finger, for some reason I end up moving around a bit on this tune, so do whatever feels comfortable. So, so far that bar goes like this. And then we're going to do what's a rare thing in this book, which is a chord. Um, not a full chord, but a little sort of mini chord. So if you imagine your usual F shape, um, we're just going to play the bottom two strings, so the third and fourth string. So you actually just need those two fingers on. And that's, and that's quaver seven of the bar. And then once again, quaver nine is your first string. So this is what we've got so far. Let's try that again. Sorry, a bit of a shaky chord there, but you get the gist. Then the third bar um, starts exactly the same as the first bar. And then this time we're going to do a little technique um, which is basically trying to emulate what tenor banjo players do. So tenor banjo players, which are much more accustomed to playing Irish tunes than we are, as claw hammerers, um, they do a lot of those sort of tremolo effects. So um, if I just get a plectrum for a second, don't shoot me for playing my banjo with a plectrum. So um, with a plectrum, you just basically go very fast down and up, and that's a tremolo, and tenor banjo players do that a lot. Now, this is my attempt at emulating that within claw hammer. It's similar to a technique that we've done in other tunes, where we, in reels, we use a lot of same note triplets. So that's where we play, for example, so that's down, up, down, through the same string. So I will have shown you that before if you've been watching these other tutorials. That's where you use your playing nail and go down, up, down, through the string. Um, as I've mentioned in other videos, I'm actually really bad at doing it, but it's great if you can get it. <laughs> um, this, in a way, is, is tr even trickier, because what we're actually trying to emulate here is not a triplet, but a tremolo. So if a tenor banjo player, I mean, I've, I've heard versions by Barney McKenna, among others, where they play it like this. Oh, sorry. So it's a very fast, it's not even a triplet, because a triplet would be, would be slower than that. It's literally just a fast tremolo. Now, the only way I can think to do it in claw hammer is essentially to use that technique that I mentioned in the in the other videos, down, up, down, with your nail. So it probably looks very intimidating on the page because it's notated as two, I don't even know what they are, hemi, demi semi quavers and a normal and a dotted quaver, but don't get too hung up on exactly how long they're meant to last. Basically, the idea is that it's a very quick kind of triplet feel. So. <laughs> But as you can tell, I'm actually, I find it quite hard to do. There we go, better that time. Like that. And for reasons that I don't understand, I actually find it easier to do if I switch nails just for those triplets. No idea why. So I'm using my middle finger most of the time and then my third finger for that triplet. And for some reason that seems to work for me. It might just be because of my third finger nail is quite long. Um, but anyway, give that one a go. So. Uh, then you're going to finish the bar. Quaver 9 is going to be an A, which is your second fret of the third string. So the best way to think of that complicated looking fast thing uh, is that basically it's one note, but you're just playing those first two notes as quickly as you can. So it's kind of like doing a grace note, I suppose, but it's just they're all the same note. So that bar... Hope that makes sense. Um, then the first time ending of the A part
sharp, so this is the first time you play around the A, you're going to play an F sharp um, on the fourth string, so that's your fourth fret. You can use your little finger if you can, or your third finger is fine. You're going to do an off string pull off on the third string, so in case you haven't seen those before. When you play the F sharp, get a finger ready on the third string. Technically, it doesn't particularly matter which one. I'm using my first finger there. So you play that note, and with the finger that you put on the third string, do a pull off. Like that. And then put it back on, and play the third string again. Like that. So F sharp, G, A. Then we're going to go right the way up to the first string and play F, E, D, so third fret, pull off to two, then pull off, then play zero, like that, and then put your D7 shape back on and play second string, third string, and your first string, and that's going to take you back to the start of the A. Um, as with many things, um, I'm not just playing that first note of the three, I'm sort of hammering on as I do it. So the whole bar should go like that. Then we go all the way around the A part again. And the second time ending of the A part is exactly the same apart from the very last note. So instead of a D, you're going to play a G. So and then we go on to the B part. Uh, so the B part, we're going to go up to fifth position. So if you put your first finger on the um, fifth fret of the second string, and you're going to play the first string open, drop thumb the second string, play the seventh fret, so that's an F sharp, seventh fret of the um, second string, sorry, and then switch over to the first string of the fifth fret, and that's your G. Then you're going to fret the fifth string. So put your third finger on the seventh fret of the fifth string and play that with your thumb. And then you can either quickly move that finger back to the seventh fret of the second string, or what might be easier is use your little finger and play, play it with that instead. Uh, and then you're going to play the fifth fret on the first string again, but we're going to use this tremolo -y thing again. There it is. That's the one. So, even quicker than that if you can. Getting there. Uh, I thought I'd just learn this technique with you, you see. Um, then we're going to play the... It's great when you get it, I promise. Uh, then it's the seventh fret on the second string at the end of the bar, so that's quaver nine. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Like that. Then... Move your hand up to 7th position at this point and play the 1st string, open, then 9th fret of the 3rd string, which is an E, so we've got D, E, F sharp, so that's the 7th fret of the 2nd string. So it's actually the same first three notes as the first bar, but we're playing them here because of the next group, which features a high B. So because on a banjo we often have multiple places we can play the same note, but because this particular B, we can't play it any lower than here, uh, we, it's easier to move our hand up. So if you're thinking that sounds the same as... It is. <laughs> uh, so there you go. So those are your first three notes. Then you put your second finger on G. So that's the eighth fret of the second string. Third finger on the ninth fret of the fifth string. And you're going to play G, B, G. So, so far in that bar. Then if you drop your first finger on for a half bar on the 7th fret, so cover the 1st and 2nd strings, and play 1st string, 2nd string, and then the 1st string just open, so... Like that. That open string hopefully buys you enough time to get back down the other end of the banjo and play um, here. So we're going to play C, D, E. So that's the 1st fret of the 2nd string. Have a finger ready on the first string and play the first string as one of those off string pull offs. I much prefer that than a hammer on just because I think it sounds a bit stronger. And then you can put your finger straight back on because that's your next note. Then we're going to play F, 
G, E, so that's 3rd fret of the 1st string, 5th string, then up to the 2nd fret, and then an F again with a sort of grace note, so you've just played an E there, leave it on and hammer your 3rd finger on from it as you hit the note, so it isn't, it's faster than that. you can and then that's a crotchet so the last note of your bar is a first string again then we're going to play the same group of three to begin with C E D then we're going to play F E D so that's three two zero on the first string then if you form a D7 chord play second string third string and then an F sharp over here, so that's the fourth fret of the fourth string. So that whole bar, in fact, I'll play the B part so far. So we've got. And then we start again. So um, we basically the next, I'm just check the tab, make sure I don't tell you anything wrong. Yeah, that's right. So the next two bars are the same as the first two bars. So we repeat. But this time we're going to stay in seventh position. And if you form a half bar on fret seven and put your third finger on fret nine, you're going to go nine, seven, fifth string. So that's B, A, G. And what I would do is, um, with a fretted pull-off, so pulling off from one fretted note to another, always have both of them on to begin with. Play the first one, then pull it off. Don't play it, and then try and pull off, because it just sounds very weak, as you can hear. So you've got, then still with your half bar on, play first string, second string, open first string, and then the fifth string. So this time we're actually going to play the fifth string where we wouldn't normally play it, because normally the first note in a group of three is played with your with your finger, but it just so happens that it's a G this time and it's it feels a bit easier to do it this way. So then play the first string as your last note of the of the bar. And finally um, we're gonna basically play bar four again, but just change the last note. So it's that G instead of the F sharp that we played before. And that's the B part. Let's go on to the C. Okay, so the C part, um, we're going to open strings. So we've got second string, third string, second string. Then we're going to put on this shape, which is an A here and an F sharp here. Tremolo G. See earlier in the video for details. See, I don't know what I can do with that finger, but not the middle finger. Anyway, and then uh, second fret, third string, which is an A, is your quaver nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Missed it that time. Uh, then we're going to play, leave that finger on. I put the wrong finger on, sorry. Second finger. And we're going to play B, A, B. Then an arpeggio G B D. So the way I do this is G off string pull off on the B. Then the first string. Then we're going to play one of those sort of um, grace note hammers. So hammer on the C as you hit the string. Pull off to a B. And then play an A. And then um, we're going to play the first bar again. And then we're going to. I was about to say we're going to borrow that from somewhere. Yes, we are. We're going to uh, borrow this next one from the end of the A part. So that's the F sharp, G, A, F, E, D, and then D7 kind of thing, second string and third string, and then a G on the end. So this is what we've got so far. Then 
we start basically the first phrase again. And then finally bar, uh, whatever this is, bar seven of the C part, uh, we're going to go up here, F sharp, D, F sharp. So that's fourth fret, pull off, back on. Then put a C shape on. So that's first finger here, second finger here, and play first string, second string, first string, then first string on quaver seven, which lasts for two quavers, then your A on quaver nine, and finally you're going to do the same last bar as before. And that's the whole tune. So it's quite a long one, this one, and it's quite challenging as well. I would say it's uh, maybe the most challenging of the three three tunes. But anyway, it's good fun. So I hope you get that one. That's Will You Come Down to Limerick. And let's go on to the first of the two reels, which is Morning Star. Ordinarily, if you were playing this tune, it tends to have an upbeat, like, again, like most, most folk tunes do. Um, so that's third string, G, followed by a hammer. Remember, this is a reel now, so we're back in 4-4 four, four time. I say back in 4-4, four, four, you know what I mean. What, what we claw hammerers are very used to. So that's usually your upbeat. As it happens, I'm not really using it in this tune because I'm coming into it straight from Will You Come Down to Limerick. So um, I finish Will You Come Down to Limerick, which has notes on all nine quavers, so I haven't really got space to do that upbeat, so I'm not actually using it. But I just I put it in the book in case you want to play this tune on its own or with something else. So let's kind of park that to one side and go from the main melody. So first of all, we have um, a B, which is your second string. And then the beat two is a B again, but we put in a little, little grace note. Now, I'm not necessarily playing it exactly how it's written, so how it's written is, which isn't wrong. <laughs> uh, incidentally, that next note is an A, so that's your second fret of the third string. So what I've written is one of those grace note situations. So you're doing a double grace note, so you're playing the second string, hammering on the first fret and quickly pulling off again. Um, which, as I say, isn't wrong. The way I'm doing it a lot of the time is the kind of, I think quite a lot of Irish players do this, where they sort of hang on to that first note and just quickly put a slur in before the next note. So it's not quite as exact as a grace note. It's that sort of thing. So, so it's, you know, what I'm saying is you can be a little bit free with exactly how that falls as long as this note falls definitely on two and four and one and two and as long as that note appears there you can be a little bit loose maybe with that timing of the first bit um, then the last four notes of the bar are B G so that's second string dropped on the third string then we're going to do a hammer on from E to F sharp so if you put your first finger on the E so that's your second fret of the fourth string so we've been in first position we're going to move to second position Play the E, hammer on the F sharp. So, like that. Then we're going to go on and play the next bar, so bar two. So we're starting with the G and then an A, so that's a hammer on. Then a B and then a D. Um, I choose to do the off string pull off option for this, so that's your second string. Have a finger ready on the second fret of the first string and use it to pull off the first string. Technically you could do it from any fret, but the reason I choose that one is because the next note is an E, which is where your second fret is, so I would just return that finger. So it just feels a bit easier. So then it's an E, hammer on an F sharp on the first string. And then G, which is your fifth fret of the first string and pull off to an open string, which is a D. Um, then the third bar is the same as the first. And then the last bar is a kind of a neat closing phrase. So it's G then B. So again, I'm using an off string pull off. So I'm playing the G, which is my third string, pulling off the second string. 
Then I'm going to put these two fingers down. So second fret, third string, fourth fret, fourth string. And I'm going to play both those notes. And then just G. And then for the repeat, I'm going to play that on beat four to start me off again. So the A part. And then you'd be back round again. So that ending does also work when you're going into the B part. So the B part is twice as long as the A part, but you don't repeat it. So the A part is two four bar parts. It's a four bar part repeated. The B is just one eight bar part. Uh, so what we're going to do here is do a triplet first of all, and for once it isn't a same note triplet. Uh, so a triplet, to remind you, is basically three notes squeezed into where two quavers would normally be. So we're kind of going uh, one and two and three, four and one and a two and three and four and. So two still lands in the same place, one still lands in the same place, but we're just squeezing three notes into that space. So that's B, C, D. So what we do here is a double hammer on. So we're going to play the second string, hammer on the first fret, then hammer on the third fret. Like that. One and a. Then put your, then you, with that finger there, you're going to move position at this point. So you're going to put your first finger on the E, which is your second fret of the first string. And you're then going to hammer on an F sharp, which is your fourth fret first string. Um, then we've got a G, so that's why I'm moving position so that I, I can easily cover everything. Leave that finger on. In fact, leave all both those fingers on. You're going to add your little finger onto the fifth fret. So at one point you're going to have three fingers down on the same string on the fretboard, which I know seems weird, but the reason for it is you literally peel them off one at a time. Five, four, two, and then the fifth string. So there's no point taking them off because you're only going to have to put them back on again. And remember, obviously, they cancel each other out, if you see what I mean, if you've got notes higher up. So even now, leave that finger on because the next bar is going to start four, pull off back to two. So again, there's no point taking it off because, you, you know, for a fretted pull off, it's always easy to have them both on anyway. And then we've got the, that pull off. Finally, it is going to come off, and you're going to play an open D string, hammer on your third finger onto the fourth fret because we're in second position. So, second position is where your first finger plays fret two, second finger plays fret three, third finger plays fret four, and so on. And then back to that E again, and you're going to play that note, drop them a B, so that's your second string. And then you're going to play a B again, but just to be awkward and authentic, I've put in a little ornament here. So uh, you're going to play the B string, but do a little hammer pull off grace note. So you're going to very quickly hammer on the first fret, then pull off again. And then play an A with your thumb. So the first two bars. So you can either move like I just did there, to first position when you play that last group of four, or what I've written on the tab is you can actually um, wait. Until there. So either way doesn't doesn't make too much difference. Then we play the, well, you basically got the same phrase again, but you cut it short. So the same as the first bar. And then, So you just stop there, that's on beat three of bar four of the B part. And then beat four of that bar is, is two quavers. So you play an E and then pull off to a D. Uh, then we play the first two bars again. And then you've got a very quick jump here up to the fifth position. So you've got a triplet which I've already been over what a triplet is. So the first note of the triplet is your open B string, at which point you need to dash up here and play your C 
afterwards, which is your fifth fret of the third string. So that's with your first finger, and then a D, which is your seventh fret. And the reason we're doing it there is because we could do it here, as we have been doing up till now, but you'd then, basically what you'd end up with is a massive jump up here with no open strings to give you the time, because we end up with a high B. So that's why I've moved up here at this point. Once you play that, you're going to play E F sharp on the second string, so that's fifth fret, then seventh fret. Oh, sorry. And then first finger on fret five, and big stretch here. You're going to hammer on the ninth fret with your little finger. It can be done, I think. I, I don't think you have to have especially big hands or anything. What helps is if your thumb just moves this way a little bit just to give you maximum stretch at that point. It's not very comfortable, but I thought it was the easiest way of doing it. And then you've got the fifth string on the end. Then move first finger down to fret four and hammer on fret seven with your little finger. And then the same in reverse, so seven, pull off to four. So that whole bar and a bit. And then here we're going to play G, so that's your fifth fret of the first string. Drop thumb and F sharp on the seventh fret of the second string, then play an E with your whichever finger you like, <laughs> uh, fifth fret of the second string, I'm using my first finger, and then an off string pull off on the, on the first string. So obviously that last two bar phrase is really challenging. And then you would start the tune again. So it's a bit of a workout that one. The best way to remember the last four notes is that you've basically got five and seven, and then what I do is just swap round and do an off string pull off with that finger. So or that's more comfortable. Anyway, that's Morning Star. You'll go back round, play the tune twice as is customary. And then when you get to the very end, we're going to go into the Mooncoin Reel. So to go into Mooncoin Reel, um, Mooncoin Reel again has an upbeat and I do do the upbeat, which is a triplet. Um, so what I do is I cut Morning Star short. So I play that note on beat three, and then beat four is my triplet going into Mooncoin Reel, which is an A, pull off a B, and then play a C sharp. And then we're into beat one of Mooncoin Reel. So Mooncore Reel is just such a great tune, and uh, I'd never heard it before I did this book, and then I discovered it in the in the O'Neill's collection. So we've done our triplet, that's our upbeat, and then we're going to start the tune. So beat one is your first string, so we're in D major now. We're still in G tuning, but key of D major, so you'll hear the kind of key change from one tune to another. So after that first beat, we're going to play um, an A and then an F sharp. So the way I do this, we're in second position here, so first finger on two, and that's your A, so that's the second fret of the third string. And put this finger on as well, which is the F sharp, so that's your fourth fret of the fourth string. So, like that. Then we're going to play D, F sharp, so open the D string and then hammer on your F sharp. And then we're going to do one of those roll techniques. Now, I don't know if um, some of you might not have done this before, I think it's in some of my other tabs, but. Basically, we're going to put on an A chord, which is just a bar at the second fret, and we're going to play... Um, uh, no, don't do that, actually. Sorry, I've changed my mind. Uh, just use those two fingers. So um, don't play the bar simply because we've then got... A, we've got an open first string at the end. So don't put the bar on. Put just those two fingers on. So the middle two strings on the second fret. And you're going to play the third string and allow your nail to carry on down through the second string. So that's the end of the first bar. One, two, and three, and four, and, and then that's beat one of the second bar, which is your first string. So your nail's gonna follow through all of those notes. But when you get to that note, get your thumb down to the second string, because we're gonna drop thumb a C sharp, which you 
you've already got fretted there. <laughs> can kind of all come off now and then you're going to play an E and pull off to a D so that's your second fret of the first string but I hammer it on as I play the string so it's a grace note and then pull off then put those two fingers back down again or you can bar at this point whatever's easier and play second string third string third string second string and again I'm using the follow through technique because I just think it gets the best sound it makes it a little bit awkward because it's it's kind of puts our hand out of position for the next note, but I just really don't like. It's just very weak compared to that. It's a terrible thing about videoing is you can see the facial expressions that you make coming back at you. It's it's not good. Uh, so anyway, that's the end of the second bar. So uh, this is what we've got so far. And at this point, we're going to play a B. But we're going to play it on the fourth fret of the third string rather than open. The reason being is because we can get a bit of a grace note there, which sounds really nice. It's a lot more awkward than if we just played the second string, but it's worth the extra effort because it does sound lovely. So you're going to put your first finger on an A, that's the second fret of the third string, and hammer on as you hit the string onto the fourth fret. Then on one and, pull off back to the A. Then you're going to play a G, which is your third string, F sharp, which is fourth fret of the fourth string, and then we're going to do like a double hammer on. So G string, then the B string, open, second, open, second. So. Like that. And then leave that finger on, because we're going to play the first string, and then drop them, that note again. Then we're going to play an E again, grace note, pull off to the D, and then put your that shape on again, so the middle two strings, second string, third string, then open second string, hammer on second fret, and then we sort of start the phrase again. So. same as bar one we're basically going to start the part again and then we've just got a slight change here instead of uh, if you remember at the end of bar two we had this time we're going to have ever so slight change so we're going to play C sharp drop them an A open B hammer on second fret and then, um, again, we've basically got the same melody as the third bar, but we're going to play it slightly differently. So we're going to play the second string and do a, a hammer and a grace note. So before, we had this. This time we're going to have... So that's second string, hammer on, then pull off very quickly. Play the A. Then we continue as we did before. Finally, the ending again, leave that there. First string, second string, hammer, grace note, leaving that other finger on, and then and then the triplet starts us off again. Then we play the whole of the A part again. This time, when we get to the end, instead of doing the triplet, we're going to just do that little hammer on there. First string open to second fret. So just in case any of that's confusing, let me just play through the A part all the way through twice slowly. So one, two, three. Thank you. 
and then we're into the B part. I love the B part to this tune. It's amazing. So it's one of those lovely parts that's actually very easy, but immensely satisfying and sounds fantastic. Um, so it's basically a series of pull-offs, um, of repeated pull-offs, but it's just such a catchy B part. It's brilliant. So we've just done that at the end of the A part. What I want you to do here is slide that first finger up to fret four, again, as you hit the string. So beat one of the B part is a quick slide. So that's basically the working definition of a slur, of a grace note on banjo, is it's doing a slur as you hit the string, rather than it being two separate quavers. So that's beat one. One and, you pull off. So, then put your little finger on seven, and pull off again. And essentially, that is the phrase at the beginning of the B part. So it's three times round that very, very simple phrase. And then we're going to do the first pull off again. This time we're going to play the D again and hammer it back on. So the first two bars. We start we're going to move down to second position and do a half bar on the second fret sorry the sun is very bright in this room <laughs> makes me look like an alien uh, so a uh, half bar there on the second fret and hold that half bar play you're going to play the first string then the second string and you're going to alternate putting your little finger on fret five and taking it off again so it's off first <laughs> second string then the first string so that's your sort of follow through technique now this bit slightly awkward what I do here is that last note because I'm playing it with my playing finger what I think sounds quite good is if you slide back into the first phrase again so it's actually um, you're not really playing the note, you're just letting the slide do it. But in order to do that, you have to find a way for this half bar to just cover the first string for that last note, because otherwise you get this. And you can hear that note, which obviously you don't want. So it's a little bit complicated, but slowing it right down, this is bar four of the B part. As you play that note, just lift that first finger so that it's no longer covering the second string, just the first string, and then slide it for the next note. Obviously I'm not going to get any volume now because I'm playing too slow. But if you do it straight away then you can get that, that nice sort of grace note sound. So just to recap, this is the B part so far. So then we start that first phrase again. Now here, what I do is that last, the last note of this bar now, if you remember it was a hammer on back onto the fourth fret. It's the same note this time, but because of what follows, we're actually gonna move position. So we're gonna play the F sharp here instead. So this is the seventh fret of the second string and you're gonna drop thumb this note instead. For reasons which will become obvious. So from the th uh, fifth bar of the B bar, play the note there because now we're going to hammer on a G um, as we hit the string. So again, this is a grace note. So like that, that's a crotchet. So that's beat one of the penultimate bar. Then we're going to pull off back to the as you can hear, it's quite hard when you're playing slowly not to catch the first string by accident. Then return that G on, and this is the reason we've moved, because we've got a B here. 
which is the ninth fret of the fifth string, and we can't play that note any lower than the ninth fret, which is why we've moved position. So this far, so far. And then finally A, that's your fifth fret of the se uh, seventh fret of the first string, sorry. Then play the fifth string open, which gives you time to move back down here and play the closing phrase, which is F sharp, so that's your fourth fret of the first string, pull off, half bar, first string, then second string, and then your first string. And then to go round the B part again, you would use that upbeat to get back into the start of the B, play all the way around the B again, and when you get to the end, if you're finishing completely, you can just finish. If you're starting the tune again, you can put the triplet at the end. Um, or what I did when I played it through in the video was I did a little sort of a slow down extra tag on kind of ending. So what I did there is I, I played what's written, so and then A, that's your second fret third string, G, which is your open third string, E, second fret of the fourth string, and then your bottom string. And that's and that's the whole lot. So it's a really really great tune. And as I say, the B part particularly is actually remarkably easy. But it's just the, the just towards the end there, you've got a bit of a tricky phrase. I'm sorry about this light. So let's do something about that. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Um, that's all the tunes. Any tips you need, just just give us a shout. Um, again, just to remind, I teach very regularly. I teach one to one on Skype or Zoom or whatever outlet you want to use. Um, and I've got my Patreon page if you want lots of exclusive lessons on different techniques and on different tunes you get tabs as well as well as some performances from me um and uh also um buy the book uh the book is uh, in the description below you can buy that on amazon and um, that's got all the tabs from the tunes that i've been teaching you um, but thanks so much for tuning hope you enjoy the tunes and uh happy playing i'll see you soon thanks <laughs>